They've done a bunch of scouting of Richardson. They went to games this year. They've met with him this week. And now you hear those comments. 248-539-9797. I think the money quote, Rico, certainly our eyes are on man, potentially a quarterback. Oh, he's got to have the man. What does that even mean? Certainly, it, it, potentially, it's, it's like hedging your bets, man. It's what everybody knows. It's Jared Goff's not the long-term solution. Now, I think he's been here longer than most most people thought. When he first got here, I remember everybody over there behind the board and Mike said, no, one year. I'm like, guys, they re-upped him immediately. Like, yeah, he's part of the plan. He's the, he's the, the extended band-aid. But eventually, he's not going to be the guy that I think that leads the Lions to the promised land. But it's the conundrum that I think that the Lions are in that I keep speaking of. Mm-hmm. But you're winning with him. Yep. But, you don't, know what but, don't, but don't get suckered in. No, I, no, it's, it's not suckered. It's just, mm, it's, it's, it's what happened with, the, with Jimmy G. Yep. You're winning with him, but you know I'm never going to win with him. Well, I think that's the perfect comparison. And if you talk to Niners fans, they built the greatest defense they could. And they still couldn't win. So when Lions fans say, just give Goff a defense, I think the Niners are the cautionary tale. Uh, This is me agreeing with Dan Campbell. They're not pressed. They don't have to do anything. They can roll Goff out next year or the year after. But if a guy they scout is there and they like him, I I think they're serious about taking him. Give me the teams again that also interview with him. It's the teams. You said Indianapolis, they're at four. Mm -hmm. Las Vegas, seven. Mm -hmm. Carolina, nine. Falcons at eight as well. Falcons at eight. Yep. The New England Patriots at 14 and the Giants at what? 26. Because mm-hmm. so, again, they don't have long-term confidence with Daniel Jones. So once again, you're looking at teams that are all but one okay. are underneath you. This is capitalizing on that number six spot. You would have loved to have been in it. In a perfect world, the Lions would be where the Cardinals are because now you're sitting in the catbird seat. You can either have the best defensive player or you can get a pile of picks. I think the Cardinals will screw this up. Hmm. But in that spot, everybody wants to call you because, you know, Chicago's going to deal that pick away. It's going to be a quarterback, quarterback, and then what? For the Lions, Anthony Richardson, I think, is a godsend because people believe in him. Now, if you can get people to thinking, okay, maybe we're interested too, which is what I hope they are then this works because either you throw up a lot of smoke or in a, and I think the lion's best case, they swap picks with Vegas. Okay. And you pick seven, let them take Richardson and you still draft who you were going to draft at six. You think it's smoke. I think where there's smoke, there's fire. I think there's a real serious consideration to drafting Anthony Richardson for the Detroit lions. We'll get to the phone calls. Jay, you're up first. You're on 97 one. Jay, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, fellas? Hey, man. <clears throat> Look, so I don't think that Dan Campbell is, you know, doing a whole smoke screen thing. I I really do think that he is considering taking a quarterback at number six. Look, they are already three years into what their six, seven year deal of, you know, being able to take the Lions, hopefully to the Super Bowl. They that's what they want to do. But they know golf. They they had golf for two years now. He's going into his third year as a lion. They reconstructed his contract. They giving him a crazy amount of weapons, they know that they need somebody to have, you know, behind golf to say, hey, you know what? If golf doesn't work out after his third or fourth year, we can just put this new guy in. We can, we can, you know, develop this guy and then put him in. I know for, well, I don't know for a fact, obviously, but I do really think that Dan Campbell is, he's been very transparent from day one. Like, hey, you know what? We're going to start in the trenches. We're going to start in the trenches and we're going to build out. They have done that the last two drafts. Rico, I want to say, I want to ask you, you say the Packers drafted Jordan Love out of spite. Yeah, I think that that is true. But also Aaron Rodgers is, you know, technically still a Packer, even though he may be out his, you know, out of the door. He still is, you know, third year Packer, you know, after Jordan Love has been drafted, right? Yeah, so I mean, but how long has Jordan Love Jordan been Love, there? <laughs> he's been there. This is his third year. Right. right? Going into his third year. <laughs> and, you know, Aaron Rodgers like is it. still there, so they can they can still draft him out of spite. But, you know, they know Aaron Rodgers is their guy. They know that even after Aaron Rodgers leaves, Jordan Love is going to step in. And he's going to take over that Packer offense. So, no, I don't think – and no, no, Jay, Jay, here's, here's, really here's, Jay, hold on. I'm going to let you finish. Here's where I'm at with Jordan Love. 
I think they took him because this was the genesis of Aaron Rodgers kind of acting up. So we'll show – we'll go get it your replacement. And they wasted a first-round pick. And he hasn't yeah. played. And that's what – if you draft somebody in the first round, they have to be a starter for your team. You can't be no, sitting don't. there for three years later. Well, they later. can't sit for three, but you could sit them for I, one, and Holmes just did it a year ago. He just right. did it a year ago. It's not act like I, it's I that crazy. That. I don't think that they need to – I don't think that they need to have somebody come in and just start – you know, right away if they draft him at six. He is a project. Richardson would be a project. And if, you know, Campbell and Holmes like him, they evaluate him the right way, I do think that they will let him sit for a year and say, hey, you know what, we're even going to build up this offense even a little more, get a running back, maybe a guard or a tackle, and say, hey, you know what, next year, this team is yours. I get, but, you know, no, I appreciate the phone call, Jay. And, and, I'll, and I'll make the argument, Jim, and, and you know what, we'll never agree, but – Jameson Williams was great having them on the team. He's going to be a great future. But I could say, if you took somebody who actually played for you last year, maybe you're in the playoffs. The goal isn't to make the playoffs. The goal is to no, win no. the Super but Bowl. But if, if you went from being god awful to the playoffs oh, in I would one year, that. who wouldn't like that? That's a great step. But that's I would, a better step. I'd rather make the pick that gives them the best chance to to compete for the championship and to be in this thing for more than a season. And I think that you would have. I think Jameson Williams would have been a better long term pick than Jordan Davis. Okay. And I would, and I would never, tackle. and I would never, yeah, just a nose tackle. A and I never tackle. want to operate a team that short sighted. That's not. I, how is this? You know what? Nope. Let's go on. Let's move. <laughs> David, David take got? a text. I feel like Kenny right now. No, there's You're animosity in the room today. <laughs> you can have golf at forty million for the next five years and hope he stays at a top ten level, or slot in a QB on his rookie deal for twenty twenty four and beyond, and then build up a Super Bowl roster like. Philly, give me Richardson at six, they say. Nice Sell it, Dan. Thing. They want someone to overpay for six and or 18. Sell it, Dan, they See, say. That's what I think he's doing. Because especially with the Raiders and the Panthers and the Falcons sitting right there. So if you've got a guy that you want and you know, yeah, they want the quarterback, I'm still going to get my guy because they're going to be taking quarterbacks. So – I now picked up an extra first round pick, or I actually picked up two more second rounders, and I still got the guy that I wanted. Great. Kudos. So you, you look, pulled off the caper. You look at all the teams that met with Richardson and think, aha, they're picking behind the Lions right for a trade. I think, oh, the Lions are like those teams. They're in the same spot as all those teams. They don't have a long term franchise quarterback. No, it's, so it's not playing a game. It's doing the homework because they might actually make the pick. Not no, trade it, make it. See, I think it's it's what happened with the Chicago Bears. Play the game. Hey Justin, we may we're gonna act like we don't want you. And they went out there and they did everything and now what's everybody saying? Oh you know Chicago's gonna trade out that pick. It's gonna be a bidding war because they made it seem as if, you know, we can take a quarterback. Yeah, we, we can take one of these quarterbacks. No, no, no. You don't want a quarterback. You got a, you got a good quarterback already. Let me give you stuff for this quarterback, for that spot. I think the Lions are doing the same thing. The Lions and the, the, the uh, Cardinals and the Bears are sitting in the best spot because a lot of people want quarterbacks in this draft. If you can get past that you not may not get Carter and you may not get Will Anderson, but you'll get a bunch of picks that can help you down the line, and you're okay with that, this will work. 248 539 9797. Real or play in the game? Are they serious or is it all a smokescreen? We'll get some thoughts on it. We're, we're doing a blitz takeover today. Rico's going to have a blitz for the show. I'm bringing a blitz to the table today. We're going to get to that before the hour ends. It's 97. 